Okay, shalom, shalom, shalom. Yasha Allah. Kwame Yasha Allah, hallelujah. All praises to you. How about Shemashiach Yabashai? HOI to the Chariots Fly, House of Israel Congregation. My name is Priest Zabak. All praises to you. How and Yahweh Shai for Evan Avaman. Uh, shout out to all the camps, congregations, brothers and sisters out there throughout the four corners of the earth, <clears throat> of the HOI family and affiliates and followers, and of all the sincere brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel that are out there serving the Most High and the Mashiach Yahweh Shai. In love, sincerity, and truth, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and patience, all praises. All right. Shalom. All right. Uh, listen up, Israel. Hanukkah is right around the corner. It's this week, matter of fact. It's the end of this week or the beginning of next week, uh, depending on how you look at it. So this year we got a treat because the Most High gave us the Hanukkah season to offset the so-called Thanksgiving. This year, Hanukkah falls a little bit early, all right? And I'm going to share a video on my Facebook, maybe later today, of a video I did back, I think, in 2013, where Hanukkah and so-called Thanksgiving actually fell on the same day. Now, we know, like I always say, there's a discrepancy. Shalom, everybody. There's a discrepancy with the calendars this year. You're going to see some Israelite congregations and camps keeping the Feast of Dedication a month from now. Some brothers are going to go from December 28th to like January 5th or 6th. All right. They say we too early. Some of us say they too late. But sometimes uh, every few years, your feast days do fall a little bit earlier, maybe a week or two earlier than normal or usual because of the way the calendar system is set up and the way of calculating the feast days. That's for another video and reasoning. But this year, the Hanukkah 2021 is falling a little bit early. All right. So everyone, Hanukkah, Kanukkah, Feast of Dedication, it starts this Sunday, November 28th at even. And I'm going to give you all a short video tonight, today, depending on what time zone you're in, on how to celebrate the Feast of Dedication. It's simple. It's just like any other feast day. You pray. You open up with prayer, of course, the Lord's Prayer, whatever other prayers you want to say facing Jerusalem. You read the story of the Maccabees, the primary chapters to read. Well, the primary chapter is 1 Maccabees, the fourth chapter, but you can read chapters 1 through 4 to get the understanding and the history of the story. All right. Um, also, Daniel's the eighth chapter, verses one through 14. Uh, Daniel's 11, verses 30 to 35, I believe it is. But we're going to give you all the scriptures throughout, you know, the season. And when we do the service on Sunday, November 28th, we're going to go into all the scriptures that deal with Hanukkah. But today is just a short, quick lesson letting you know what to do for Hanukkah, mainly how to celebrate it. And what to do, which is, like I said, is really not, nothing too special. It's just like the other feast days. You pray, you read the story, remember the story, and you feast and celebrate throughout the eight days. All right. But um, first and foremost, everyone knows for the Feast of Dedication or the Feast of Hanukkah, you need your menorahs. All right. You need your seven branch menorahs. This is a menorah chain. That I'm wearing, but you need your seven branch menorahs in your home. All right, so I have the menorahs. You can get them from me. Um, so you can have your menorahs in your home. Uh, and you can know what to do, you know, uh, burn your menorahs for the entire eight days of the feast. So I'm going to show y'all now real quickly because a lot of y'all hit me up asking me. These are the ones I have available. I have this one available, which is the 18 inch. With the Jerusalem um, design on, um, Jerusalem on the front and different designs of the 12 tribes on it. That's the 18 inch. All right. That's the 18 inch. I can inbox me if you're interested in uh, purchasing that one. I'm going to go down through the different sizes I have. This one is the 16 inch. This has Jerusalem on one side and Shalom on the other side and different designs on it also. 
This is the 16 inch with Jerusalem and Shalom on uh, both sides. The 16 inch, all right? Um, I'm going from larger down. I also have 24 inch and 36 inch, but I don't have those available to show right now, but I do have them in stock. This is the 15th inch with the shield. But for those of y'all that are spooky about the shield, you think it's the star Molech, this can be removed and another piece that looks like the olive branches can be put in its place. This is the 15 inch or like 15 and a half between 15 and 16 inch. All right. The other one is like a 16 inch, 16 and a half. All right. But that's the 15 inch I have available. All right. Um, this one is the 10 inch. It has the Jerusalem and the Shalom on this one also. This is the 10 inch. I have available the 10 inch. And last but not least, I got the small silver and brass. This is the small five inch I have available with Shalom on both sides also. It says Shalom on both sides in the modern Hebrew. All right. Also, like around my neck, I also have the menorah chains available. All right. In different colors and styles, the menorah chains are available. All of these you can get from me. Um, just inbox me here on Facebook or email me. All right, and I have other colors and designs also. All right, um, have the silver and black when I got it in the different colors I showed y'all. Y'all can inbox me here on Facebook or email me at House of Israel NYC at gmail.com. Uh, Sister Elaine, I believe that is. Um, I don't, I don't discuss prices. Um, openly, you have to inbox me for that. All right, there's a reason for that, you know, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. You inbox me for uh, pricing and ordering details. I don't discuss prices openly. Um, but these menorahs and menorah chains are available for y'all during the Hanukkah season. If y'all want one, inbox me. Inbox me. Send me a, a DM message, and I'll give you pricing and ordering details. All right. Uh, before anybody gets simple, let me put that out there. This is not to make merchandise of Israel or, or you just try to make money off the people because the gainsayers and the uh, uh, overrighteous brews, they'll come at you. So this is to help people get their menorahs like how tons of y'all have asked me over the years so y'all can celebrate your Hanukkah and you can have your menorahs in your home. Shalom. Kelly, flat too deep. What do you say, Shakalakwa? Shalom, familiar. Kelly, far too deep. I don't know what that means, but I'll deal with that later. I guess I'll figure out what you're saying. But anyway, these are for y'all to have y'all menorahs in y'all home. Oh, you're saying Shalom to somebody named Kelly. Okay. Um, For y'all to have y'all menorahs in y'all home. Now, it's already Tuesday, Right? So if y'all place y'all orders, I will try to get them in the mail by tomorrow. If you place your order between tonight and tomorrow morning, I'll get you out tomorrow. Depending on what city you in, you may, you may get your menorahs before Sunday. You might have to get it on a Shabbat. If you overnight it, I can overnight it to you. Um, you have to pay for the extra sh uh, shipping fee for overnight. And... Uh, Salaki, so y'all, a little bit under the weather. But uh, Hanukkah runs from December, I mean, November 28th this Sunday. It's early this year. It normally falls sometime in December, from early December to mid or late December even. But it runs from November 28th to December 6th. So even if you order your menorahs a little bit late, you will still get them. Within the eight days of Hanukkah, where you'll still have them, you may not have it for the opening, but you will still get it because it's kind of late. Some of y'all got to me early. Some of y'all just ordered today or you may order tomorrow, whatever the case may be. But you need your seven branch menorah for um, the Feast of Dedication. Let's go to um, Zechariah chapter four and verse two. All right. We're going to go to the book of Zechariah. In the Apoc I mean, um, not the Apocrypha, so like in the Old Testament, the prophet Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 2. And it says, And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick 
all of gold with a bowl upon it. So when Zechariah is describing the candlestick, I'm going to get this small one to show you an example. With a bowl upon it, he's describing the bottom. He said, I see a candlestick with a bowl upon it, upon the top of it, and his seven lamps. That's what the menorah is, the lampstand or the lamps, which we put the olive oil in and we burned in the temple to give us light during the time of Moses, Aaron, and the ancient temple. And during the time of Solomon with the temple, uh, what's like your Moses and Aaron with the tabernacle in the wilderness, the most I gave us the seven branch menorah. All right, and it says, and seven pipes, these are pipes, seven pipes to the seven lamps. The lamps is considered up here, the seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, which are upon the top thereof of the menorah. So what was Zechariah describing? He was describing the seven branch menorah or the seven branch candlestick. Keep that word candlestick in mind. So now, once again, I showed y'all the different sizes. Um, inbox me if you need to order. Um, I'll get the menorahs to you. I'll get the candles to you so you can burn for the opening of Hanukkah and throughout the seven, throughout the eight days of Hanukkah. Like I said, if you don't get it on time, don't worry. You'll still get it within the week. Hopefully, the beginning week of Hanukkah, you can burn your menorah for all the seven days of the Feast of I mean, all the eight days, Salakia, of the Feast of Dedication or the Hanukkah. All right. So once again, for inquiries, inbox me here on uh, Facebook, Kaniza Bach, or email me at houseofisraelnyc at gmail.com. House of Israel, spell I-S-A-E, Salakia. <laughs> I-S-R-A-E-L-N-Y-C, like New York City, but abbreviated NYC at gmail.com. Email me at houseofisraelnyc at gmail.com or just send me a direct inbox here on Facebook for regular menorahs, the different sizes I showed y'all, and the menorah chains. All right. And that's pursuant to the book of Zechariah 4 and 2, the book of Exodus and uh, the book of Revelation and all the scriptures that speak about the seven branch menorah. Um, yeah, how was shy? Let's go to Revelation chapter one. All right, Revelation chapter one. And we went over these scriptures throughout the years on a feast of dedication. So y'all veterans should know this already. But you got to reiterate every year because what? What did the most I say? We got to put these things in your remembrance. All right, you got to go back over it every year. I mean, you can study it throughout the year, but go back over it every year and um, reiterate it in your mind and for the new people. All right. Um, somebody said, where can I purchase the candlestick holder? A big one. Um, you must have came on late. You wasn't listening. I got all sizes right here. I got 18 inch all the way down to 5 inch. All right. You must have came on a video late. You can inbox me. If you need to purchase them for the Hanukkah, you can inbox me or you can email me. You can inbox me here on Facebook or you can email me at houseofisraelnyc at gmail.com. But go back to the beginning of this video and the details are there from the beginning also. So let's go to Revelation chapter 1. And... um. I don't want to dwell too long on this because so people don't get simple because um, Israel is the biggest critics in the world. So um, I want to get to, you know, keeping the feast and uh, a few other other scriptures. But part of keeping the feast is burning your menorah. All right. So if you get simple to hell with you. All right. Um, Revelation 1 and 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. So. The menorah is written all throughout the scriptures or the, the candlesticks, the seven golden candlesticks. What's that right there on top? Seven golden candlesticks. And that's what we burn during the Feast of Dedication to give light in the temple. All right. It says uh, the seven stars are the seven are the seven angels of the seven churches. So like you. 
The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou saw, which thou sawest are the seven churches. So guess what? The menorah, when you look at it spiritually, is symbolic to the nation of Israel because the seven churches, seven represented completion. The seven churches in Adam, Asia Minor during the time of Yahawashai represented was symbolic to the nation of Israel. It was symbolic to the gospel being taught all over the earth during the time of Yahawashai with the seven churches scattered throughout Asia Minor, but that was symbolic to completion. Because Yahawashah wrote a letter to the seven main churches that was preaching the gospel at the time. But it's also symbolic to the seven archangels uh, and the nation of Israel, the seven churches and the nation of Israel. So the menorah, although it's something physical that gave light in the temple, it has its spiritual significance to it also. All praises to Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yahushah. All right. So once again. Whether you need to get your menorahs for your home, I got different ones here. The 10 inch, all right. Uh, the menorah chains in different styles uh, and colors. The menorahs, the desktop, smaller. We got bigger ones for y'all that still co sign to the shield or what they call the Star of David. We got the 15 inch with the shield of David, but this can be removed and it can be plain. Um, if you don't, if you don't co-sign to the shield of David or you got a problem with it, this is another larger one, a 16 inch, like a 16.5 inch with Shalom and Jerusalem on it, different designs that you can also get. So there you go. All right. If you need it for Hanukkah, inbox me first come first serve. I'll get the orders out between today, tomorrow and Friday because Thursday is a holiday, so-called Thanks stealing, thanks taking. So uh they'll um you know I'll get them out between today and Friday. So you can have them at least by next week early, or if you want it overnighted, we can overnight it so you can have it in time for Hanukkah. Alright? So without further ado, how do we celebrate Hanukkah 2021? Or how do we celebrate Hanukkah any year? Hanukkah is the feast of dedication. When the Maccabees, the family, the Maccabean family, the family of Levite brothers, during the time of the Greek Inquisition, when Alexander and the Greeks rose up to try to take down Israel, we fought. All right. We didn't just sit there. All right. And let guys like Cal Rittenhouse attempt to shoot us and we didn't fight back. Now, in this day and age that we in now. We got to use wisdom, all right? We're going to fight, but it's going to be on a time frame that the Most High raise us up to fight against our enemies. Not when we say so, what we feel, how we think. See, during the time of the Maccabees, when y'all read y'all Apocrypha, read the story of the Maccabees. Read First and Second Maccabees. Matter of fact, from now all the way to the end of Hanukkah and beyond is a good time to read the story of the Maccabees, both uh, books. So you can get the historical aspect of the story of what you're celebrating and just the history in general. Do you know there was three, there are three feast days and days of celebration that come out of the Maccabees. You got the Hanukkah or the Feast of Dedication. Then you have the day of Judas Maccabees. Yes, that's a, a celebration of Judas Maccabees and his wars and victories over the enemy. Then you have the day of Simon Maccabees. So there was three feast days and days of celebration that came out of the Maccabean story. The, uh, the feast of Judas Maccabees or the day of Judas Maccabees or day of Nicanor, because it was the Greek Edomite Nicanor's destruction. That's uh, the day before Purim. All right. That's the day before Purim. And then you got the two days of Purim. So we got three days of celebrating whooping the hell out of Edomites, all right, on the 12th month. Then you got the day of Simon Maccabees. That usually comes sometime in May uh, after the Passover, all right, right? In between the Passover and the Feast of First Fruits, you got the day of Simon Maccabees. On the 23rd day of the second month, where we celebrate and remember our brother Simon Maccabees. It's not that we're exalting them, 
We're just remembering them through the scriptures. All right, and you can read that throughout the Maccabees, these days of celebration for our great brothers. And the Feast of Dedication or Hanukkah or Kanukkah was given to us in the uh, Maccabean story also. So y'all can read all that history. So I can read uh, the story of the Maccabees um, throughout this season and throughout the year period. You can always read it throughout the year to get a remembrance from it. Not only just during Hanukkah, read it period. But today, we're just going to go uh, right to some key points um, to show y'all, you know, just a brief understanding on how to celebrate Hanukkah. Very basic understanding on how to celebrate Hanukkah. For those of y'all that have been around, you should already know what to do. All right, you should have your notes from the years past. You should have been reading about the uh, feast throughout the months and years. And you should know, you know, basically what you should do now when a Hanukkah starts, which is this uh, Sunday at even, November 28th. So like it, y'all, bear with me. I was fine earlier. Now when I go live to try to do a video, my damn sinuses want to act up. All right, but anyway, let's go to First Maccabees. We're going to start. At 4 and 52, we just going to get right to the point. All right, y'all have to do your own homework. Y'all got to read and study. All right, Revelations chapter 1 verse 3 says what? Blessed is he that readeth and they that get understanding. All right, I'm paraphrasing, but you know, y'all got to read. Stop being lazy. Put down the clubhouse. Get off the clubhouse. Put down the social media. Turn off. BMF and your other favorite shows. <laughs> I'm just messing with y'all. Inside joke, you know who. But uh, ain't nothing wrong with that, but balance it out. Hey, I like to binge watch some of my shows. So I can prophesy about them and talk about them in camp. But, um, you know, make that time to read also. <laughs> God, inside joke. But make that time to read. All right? But I know you read. <laughs> right? First Maccabees 4 and 52. Now, in the 5th and 20th day of the ninth month, which is called the month Caslu, in the 148th year, they rose up B times in the morning. All right, so what? On the 5th and 20th day, the 25th day of the ninth month, the month Caslu is the ninth month. All right, that represents the ninth month. So now, according to the Hebrew calendar, our ninth month just started when we kept the new moon on our... Uh, what was that? I believe that was November 5th. I know it was a Sunday, November 5th, I believe that was, if I'm not mistaken. But, no, November 4th, I believe. Yeah, I believe it was November 4th at even. We kept the new moon. So, that day, 24 days at sundown from that day would be the 25th day of the ninth month. All right, remember, Novo in Latin means nine. Even though the so-called white man telling you is the 11th one, is actually the ninth one. Because nov, just like ak means eight, septa means seven. All right, nov means uh, nine and dec means 10. So December actually, whenever the new moon falls, would actually be the 10th month. Which this year, the 10th month would come in on, everybody write this down for your notes too, December 3rd, Friday, December 3rd at even would be the new moon, 10th month. Deck meaning December. All right, it's a little early this year. Don't trip. Some of y'all gonna see the camps keeping a feast day the end of, uh, the ending of uh, December going into January. Don't trip. There was a month discrepancy between most of the major camps this year. We'll get into that another time. We explained it during the Passover. We'll get into it another time. We're focusing on keeping the Hanukkah. All right, it says, so on November 28th at sundown, if y'all don't have a place to congregate, we'll, HOI will be congregating in our different cities. All right, I will be congregating with the HOI Los Angeles congregation, but we got brothers congregating everywhere. If you're in the Milwaukee area, uh, out of sight, Ch uh, brother uh, Elijah, his, the, the HR congregation there will be celebrating. If you're in Atlanta, Chief Ephraim, Shawapar, the brothers down there will be celebrating. If you're in New York, 
Elder Terah and the rest of the brothers in New York will be celebrating. If you're in D.C., Brother Yakutaz and the brothers in the DMV area will be celebrating. If you're in Buffalo, Danyala, H.O.I. Uh, Buffalo, they'll be celebrating. If you're in Philly, H.O.I. Uh, Philly, Brother Kasaja, uh, they'll be celebrating. And uh, all the other states. Uh, Illinois, uh, uh, Captain Aria. If you're in the Illinois area, they'll be keeping uh, the Feast of Dedication. If you're in the UK, if you're in the United Kingdom, the brothers over there, they'll be celebrating. So wherever, if did I forget anybody? If you're in the Vegas area, but I believe Vegas is coming to L.A. with us. So uh, everything will be in L.A. with uh, HOI West Coast. So uh, if I forgot any state, Salakia or country, uh, we don't have too many countries. You just got the UK and we uh, building up Canada now. But uh, Detroit, Salakia, how could I forget Detroit? If you're in the Detroit area, uh, HOI Detroit uh, will be keeping the uh, Feast of Dedication. So you got different areas. If I, got, if I forgot anybody, put it in the comment board. But uh, that's most of the states of HOI. We're not worldwide as of yet. We the big, we the we the little big camp. All right. So those are the different cities you can all uh, congregate in, or if you're near one of them cities. But if not, on Sunday, November 28th, you light your menorah at sundown. You say an opening prayer. You say the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 9 through 13. You can do the prayer of the Maccabees. Uh the prayer of the Maccabees is found in 2 Maccabees. I'm going to give it to y'all right now. It's found in 2 Maccabees chapter 1, verses 24 through 30. All right. Right. 1 Maccabees, 2 Maccabees chapters 1. Verses 24 through 30, you can find a Maccabees prayer in there. So you can say that you can open up with the Lord's Prayer, the Maccabees Prayer, whatever other prayers you want to say between you and the Most High. You can do the anointing prayer, number 6, 22 to 27. And if you don't know these prayers in the Hebrew, you can say them in the English until you learn the Hebrew. So you open up, you burn your, you can burn your incense, your frankincense and myrrh, burn your menorah, and you open up with your prayer. Throughout that Sunday, since you're home, you can cook a nice big meal. Go get your groceries Friday morning or su Saturday when the sun go down. We know we on this daylight savings time, the white man messing with time. The sun goes down early uh, in, in all these cities now. So after the Shabbat, go get your uh, Shalom, y'all all. Shalom, Khan Kanai. All right, Lions of Jeshuron in the building, Chicago, SOT in the building, Atlanta, North Carolina, my Hebrews in the building. Kwame Shalom, Shalom. So go get your food and cook you a nice meal on Sunday or Saturday night, whatever. You can cook it Saturday night and warm it up Sunday. So you can have you a nice meal on the Hanukkah. All right, um, the Hanukkah itself is not celebrated as a Sabbath. It's a festival day. I mean, if you want to keep it as a Sabbath, that's between you and the Most High, but it's more so a festival day. And throughout all the eight days of the Hanukkah, including the Shabbat, you can cook because it's an eight-day feast. Now, some... Shalom. Now, some uh, congregations or camps, you might hear them say, No! On a regular Sabbath, you still can't cook because it's the Shabbat. No, you can... You can cook because it's an eight-day feast. You're feasting for eight days. All right? We just respectfully disagree. That's all. Doesn't make nobody particularly wrong or right. The Most High will work it out when he returns. But from what we see in the scriptures and the history, it's more so an eight-day feast of celebration. Uh, yes, the Feast of uh, Dedication, was it was patterned after the Feast of Tabernacles, but it was, it was not more so put as a Sabbath, all right, on the first day and the eighth day. Those are just the days of celebration that we celebrate, all right? So it's a day of celebration, but not particularly a Sabbath, all right? Reading on, uh, 53, 
1 Maccabees 4.53, and offered sacrifice according to the law upon a new altar of burnt offerings which they had made. Everybody write down Leviticus chapters 1 through 10. All right, 1 Maccabees 4 and 53 goes with Leviticus chapters 1 through 10. Namely, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And then all 10 chapters, because that give you the, all the sacrifices that the Most High gave to Israel. And also Numbers chapter 28 and 29. All the sacrifices for each feast day. And also Psalms 50 and 5. Gather my saints together, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So all of that goes with 1 Maccabees 4 and 53. Verse 54. Look at what time and what day the heathen have profaned it. Even in that was it dedicated with songs and cithurns and harps and cymbals. Now, the reason why it says look at what time the heathen had the fox. So like it. Let me read it again. It said, look at what time and what day the heathen had profaned it, meaning defiled it. Or tried to make the temple and the altar ungodly. All right. Y'all yeah, don't have to get it now, but with 1 Maccabees 4 and 54, everybody write down 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 54 to verse 63. Once again, we're not going to read it now. This is homework. This is a short lesson for y'all to get a, under a brief understanding of Hanukkah and what to do and how to celebrate and what you're dealing with. But 1 Maccabees 4, 54 with 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 54 to 60 to 64. So yeah, that's 64. All right. Once again, you got to remember with all them fours. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 54 to 64, with 1 Maccabees chapter 4, verse 54. Why does it say, look at what time and day the heathen have profaned it? Because one of the mysteries to Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication, is that what? Salakia. On the same exact day, the ninth month, 25th day that we cleansed and rededicated the temple to the Most High, it was the same day that the heathen had profaned and defiled the temple two to three years earlier. Circa, you know, the scholars, they say about two to three years before that. Some say two, some say three. But, uh, yeah, uh, on the same, so like on the same exact, I had a brain freeze, on the same exact day, the heathen had profaned it three years earlier. But three years later, the Maccabees cleansed the temple. They cleansed it on that same day, the ninth day, 25th month at even. So basically, the Most High was mocking the heathen for defiling the temple on that day. He said, I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to have the Maccabees, I'm going to have Judas and the Maccabees whoop the hell out of you Greeks, kick you out of the city, Take the tower and the city and the temple back and they're going to dedicate the altar again. And that's where your, your seven branch menorah comes in. All right. And I'm going to show you that a little bit. We will get into that a little bit later. But but first Maccabees 454 again. Look at what time and what day the heathen have profaned it. Even in that, was it dedicated with songs and cisterns and harps and cymbals with all kinds of righteous music? All right, not young Dolph, a hundred shots. All right, see, a lot of you, you, uh, you worried about these rappers getting killed or whatever. Yeah, and whatever positivity they might have been doing, but they still beefing with other rappers, rapping about negativity, and the most size killing them. They said that the Empire Records, they, they showed about four or five rappers on the Empire Records alone that was killed off. And they're saying there's a conspiracy that there's insurance policies taken out on these rappers. And that's why these rappers are being killed and bumped off because they're not making the money that they would make from years ago. Record sales, whatever. 
You know, it's different now with the streaming and online. You can be independent. You can stream your music and really don't need a label or whatever. So they're making deals with these rappers, taking out insurance policies on them, and they're killing them. All right, so that's, you know, that's one theory to look at why Young Dolph was shot dead in broad daylight while Kyle Rittenhouse was found not guilty. Zachariah 11, 4, and 5. Deuteronomy 28. And, and uh, what is it? His eyes shall be evil towards his brother. While the white man is getting off scot-free, the white supremacist is getting off scot-free in the same week. All right, so where's your focus, Israel? But anyway, I don't want to... Uh, We'll talk about Kyle Rittenhouse and Young Dolph and all this other stuff that's going on. We know y'all love the sensationalism and everything. We'll talk about that in other videos and in camp. But I don't want to get into a tangent. We focusing on a Hanukkah. But it's still within the same vibration. But the Lord said to dedicate the temple. Now, uh, 1 Maccabees 4.54. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 2 and 4. Quick precepts just to line up. Second Chronicles 2 and 4. Salakia, y'all. Second Chronicles 2 and 4. To, with 1 Maccabees 4.54. Second Chronicles 2 and 4. Behold, I build a house to the name of the Lord Power Yahweh to dedicate it to him. So, another mystery of the Feast of Dedication of Hanukkah is... When Judas and the Maccabees took back the temple, they remembered when Solomon completed the building of the temple that he had a dedication of the temple for eight days. And they copied that also. They copied the eight day dedication that Solomon had when he first built the temple. They said, let's have a rededication of the temple since it was defiled by the Greeks and these heathens and wicked Israelites, let's rededicate the temple for eight days like Solomon did when he completed the building of the first temple. Second Mac I mean Second Chronicles two and four again. Behold, I build a house to the name of the Lord Power Yahweh to dedicate it to him and to burn before him sweet incense and for the continued showbread and for the burnt offerings morning and evening on the Sabbaths. And on the new moons and on the solemn feasts of Yahweh, our power. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. See that? So that word dedicate, that's what the word Hanukkah means. It means, is a, a Hebrew word, ancient Hebrew word, Kanaka, and an ancient Paleo Hebrew, which means dedication. All right? So what? The Maccabees was, was emulating what Solomon did when he dedicated the temple after the... Uh, after he completed the building of the temple. All right. Read on. First Maccabees 4 and 55. It said, Then all the people fell upon their face, worshiping and praising the power of heaven, who had given them good success. So everybody write down Joshua 1, 7 through 9, with First Maccabees 4, 55. Remember the Lord said, Joshua said, When you follow the book of the law, then shall thy way be prosperous, and then shall thou have good success. So first Maccabees, so like it, y'all, I'm looking at the time because I'm on a schedule. All right. I don't want to rush. I want to edify y'all, but I also, uh, uh, for the sake of time, I got to get to the, you know, just helping y'all, especially this is mainly for the new people. Y'all veterans, y'all supposed to know this by the back of y'all hand. Y'all better go in y'all notes and have y'all notes from last year and the previous years. Especially if you've been here three years or more. All right. This is this is just a re, this is a refresher for you. You might be like, oh man, I forgot that, but this is a refresher for you. But for the new brothers and sisters, this is basically what Hanukkah is about. Verse 56. So once again, 1 Maccabees 455 with Joshua 1, 7 through 9. 1 Maccabees 456. And so they kept the dedication, there's dedication again, of the altar eight days, like Solomon did. And offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. See that? So that's what they did. They sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. Because what? They were delivered from the Greeks and they was praising the Most High because they got the temple back. 
uh, 57, they deck also the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold and with shields. All right. And the gates and the chambers, they renewed and hang doors upon them. So they, they, uh, how do you call it? They renovated the temple and they decorated it. So it's nothing wrong with decorating for Hanukkah. Don't let no simple, over-righteous, no understanding Israelite tell you, oh, you try to be like Christmas. Because y'all going to get, you're going to get that uh, this year. Every year, I mean, we've been cutting them so much, so it kind of slowed down. But over the years, you'll get over-righteous Hebrews that'll tell you, you going off. Hanukkah is not in Leviticus 23, so you're not supposed to celebrate it, which they dumb as hell and don't know the Bible. Now, y'all know, I normally don't get like that with Israel, but a lot of these simple wannabe over-righteous Israelites that don't think they know something, you didn't read Daniel's 8, you didn't read Daniel's 11, you didn't read the history, you didn't read the Maccabees and find out that the Feast of Dedication was added to our calendar throughout history. All right, uh, you didn't read for uh, uh, St. John, the 10th chapter, where Yahweh Shai kept the Feast of Dedication. When you go into Greek, it's Hanukkah. When you go into Hebrew New Testament, it's Hanukkah. All right, so read no, it says, uh, so you can decorate for Hanukkah. You can get whatever, nice decorations, menorahs, but make sure you have your menorah in your home. If you don't get it by the opening, you can still get your menorah into next week and you'll have it for the whole year and next year. Lord forbid if we're still here. But you'll have your menorah. You can burn your menorah on the Shabbat. You can burn it during feast days. You can burn it just when you're praying, whatever. There's no set time, but it's very important to burn it during Hanukkah because it's a major part of the feast. All right. Uh, verse 58. Thus was Salakia. Thus were there very great gladness among the people for that the reproach of the heathen was put away. Yeah. Everybody write down 2 Maccabees, the 6th chapter. They defiled the hell out of the temple, the Greeks. They had harlots in there. They had swine's flesh on the altar and unclean beasts. They built altars to Zeus and Jupiter. All right, so they were going off. All right, so now they were happy that now the temple is cleansed. All right, 59. Moreover, Judas and his brethren, with the whole congregation of Israel, ordained that the day of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their season from year to year by the space of eight days, from the five and twentieth day of the month cast loop with mirth and gladness. So what? It was ordained. It was added to the Hebrew calendar. How the hell are you going to tell the Lord what he can do? Just because it ain't in Leviticus 23, the most I can't add a feast day to the calendar. You out of your mind. The Lord can do what the hell he want to do. And he added a feast day to the calendar. A festival and a day of celebration. They said from that point on, from that point on, we are going to ordain that this day, I believe this was 165 BC, if I'm not mistaken. We'll go back over all the dates and everything during the lesson. Y'all will learn a little bit more deeper history and everything. This is real basic uh, on the cutting room floor, so to speak. But I believe it was 165 B.C., the first uh, Feast of Dedication or kind of cup. But I'll get the exact uh, date for y'all. All right. It says, uh, at that time also, they built up the Mount Zion with high walls and strong towers round about. But the Gentiles, less like it, less the Gentiles, less like it, less the Gentiles should come and tread it down as they had done before. So they fortified and built up the city. Not only did they take the temple back, they cleansed the temple. They woke up early, early that morning. B times, that's what B times mean. It means early in a timely manner in, in, in the morning. They rose up real early and they cleansed the temple. They decorated it and they're going to rededicate it to the, to the Most High. All right, it says, uh, at that time also, they built it up the Mount Zion with the high walls and strong towers round about, lest the Gentiles should come and tread it down as they had done before. That's what you did. When you took back your city, you built walls and towers around it so uh, the invaders, other nations, and invading enemies couldn't get in. And they set there a garrison to keep it and fortify Bethsura to preserve it 
that the people might have a defense against Idumia. Now, who is Idumia? Idumia was Alexander the Greeks and the Greeks, and uh, by this time, Antiochus Epiphanes the Fourth. All right, and these different Greek leaders and generals that Israel was fighting against, and then of course Antiochus the Fifth came in. All right, but who was being called Idumia now? The Greeks. What does the uh, word Idumia mean? It means Edom. It's Greek for Edom. So who are the Edomites? The Greeks. We don't give a damn about bugged out camps and men talk about the Greeks were black. Yeah, the Hellenized Greeks was black, but not the original Greeks. You, you trying to tell me Philip II and Alexander were, were, were black men because it said they was uh, Macedonian? Because it said Philip of Macedon II? But remember, 1st Maccabees said they was the first ones that reigned over Greece. Everybody know the Greeks were Edomites, so-called white people. But you got bugged out doctrines out here telling you the Greeks are black. All right, but this is basically the culmination of 1st Maccabees chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4 up until verse 52. This is the culmination of it. So this is what we're celebrating on the Feast of Dedication, the taking back of the temple and the dedicating it, the, uh, the candlestick and everything being set back up in the temple. Let me um, see if I can get that. Yeah, right here. Um, 1 Maccabees 4.36, it says, Then said Judas and his brethren, Behold, the enemies are discomfort. Let us go up to cleanse and dedicate the sanctuary. Oh, uh, no, I want 24, 424. After this, they went home and sung a song of thanksgiving and praised the Lord Yahweh in heaven because it is good because his mercy endureth forever. So everybody write down with uh, 1 Maccabees 424, Psalms 136. It says, oh, give thanks unto Yahweh for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. So what is our true thanksgiving? The feast of dedication, the feast of Hanukkah. And thank the Lord. Lord, look, look at how it's falling this year. The feast of dedication or Hanukkah is falling three days after so-called Thanksgiving, which the feast of dedication is our true thanksgiving. So if your family's saying, why are you not coming over Thursday to eat no turkey? You tell them because I'm going Sunday to eat some turkey. For the Feast of Dedication, for the Feast of True Thanksgiving. Come here, Shala. You can make a turkey for Thanksgiving. Turkey is a clean bird, but not on that every, every fourth Thursday of uh, November like Abraham Lincoln told you. All right, no. You celebrate the true Feast of the Most High. Don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving commemorates the slaughtering of the Pequa Indians. I believe over 700 Pequa Indians were slaughtered. And uh, y'all can look up the history, the true history of Thanksgiving. We got videos and stuff about that we'll be sharing over the next days. And we might do a refresher Thursday. But, you know, some of y'all veterans, y'all should know the true history of Thanksgiving. Don't celebrate that. See how the Most High is a genius? Remember in our second Ezra, he said, by measure have he measured the time, by number have he numbered the time. He allowed our feast of dedication to fall right during this wicked season of Thanksgiving going into Christmas. So you can offset that. Don't go sit down and eat that turkey with your family. A brother asked me online, brother, what's the best way for me not to celebrate Thanksgiving? Just don't do it. He says, should I fast? Now, fasting is up to you. That's something good to do too. You can fast Wednesday sundown to Thursday sundown. Or, or maybe uh, Thursday, Sunday, or Friday, Sunday, however you want to do it. I guess it'll be better to do Wednesday to Thursday because, you know, it's, it's with, within that day of so-called Thanksgiving. You can do two days if you want, Wednesday, Sunday, or Friday, Sunday, whatever. It's not a commandment, but that's a good thing to do to make sure you don't eat that food. But the best way to not keep Thanksgiving is don't do it. Let your family know I'm not partaking of that. You know, I don't celebrate the holidays of this society. But it's about family and just coming together and eating. Yeah, we're going to do that Sunday for the Feast of Dedication, of Hanukkah. All right, so Sunday after you uh, Sunday after you say your opening prayer, 
All right, let me see something. Oh, I mean, I'll read that in a minute. Salakia. Sunday, after you, uh, Sunday evening, you do an opening prayer. You do the Lord's Prayer, the prayer of the Maccabees like I gave you. Then you read some scriptures on Hanukkah. The main scriptures is 1 Maccabees chapters 1 through 4. That's kind of long, so you can start on that now. Maybe Sunday, uh, you can just read 1 Maccabees chapter 4. Get right to the point. Once you finish that, you burn your uh, menorah again if your candles went out or whatever. You light your incense again, your, your Frank and Myrrh if that went out, and you do a closing prayer. You do a closing prayer after you read the story. You do a closing prayer, and then after that, you pray over your food and your drink, and you can eat, drink, and be merry. Eat your food, drink your wine, and celebrate. Play spiritual music, or you can play truth music, all right, and celebrate and get into the spirit. But that's for Israelites to have to keep it at home. But you should be trying to congregate in the different cities that we mentioned. And if you, uh, for those of y'all that didn't hear, go back to the beginning of the video. We diff mentioned the different HOI cities that you can contact us and find somewhere near your city where you can celebrate. All right, and keep the Feast of Dedication and the Hanukkah. And that's basically it. And you remember the story, you know, throughout the eight days, read through the Maccabees, read through the law. Uh, um, anybody asking now, you can inbox me. Inbox me. What is that? Somebody saying VA. Yeah, we got HOI DMV. Uh, Yakutaz and the brothers Karatazad down in uh, DC. We got HOI DC. You can contact and keep the uh, feast with them. If you're in a VA area, all right, that's the closest we got to Virginia. Um, what was I saying? Uh, throughout the eight days, you can celebrate. It's a good time to cook, you know, stay away from a lot of that eating out. If you do eat out, eat clean foods or whatever, try to go somewhere nice. You can do that. You can treat your family out. You can go out. It's, it's, a, it's a feast day for eight days, so you're in the spirit of celebration. Uh, you can give gifts. There's no law against giving gifts. You can give gifts. Um, on the Feast of Purim is when the scriptures mainly said we gave gifts to the poor and portions and stuff like that. But you can give gifts. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not trying to be like Christmas. You're just giving a gift to a fellow Hebrew that you love in the spirit of Feast of Dedication. But if you're over-righteous, holier than thou, Israel, you're going to get in the kingdom five minutes before us because you do it better Fine, if you don't give no gifts during Hanukkah, I'm not trying to be like Christmas. Y'all just trying to be like Christmas, right? Then knock yourself out. Don't give no gifts. Oh, holier than thou one. But you can give gifts. There's no law against it. You want to give your wife something nice, your children, whatever the case may be, a brother or sister. You want to get a congregation something nice. If you're balling like that, knock yourself out. There's no law against it. All right, and give the gift of love and fellowship at the end of the day. So that's basically how you celebrate Hanukkah, all right, the Feast of Dedication this year and every year. If you, uh, if you have any other questions or if I left out anything, I do apologize. Inbox me here on Facebook. I'll answer y'all before Sunday to the best of my ability or email me at houseofisraelnyc at gmail.com. Either one is fine. Knock yourself out. Either one is fine. Or you can text me at my number is uh, psych. No, I'm not giving out my number. But <laughs> I have a number, a public number I'm going to give y'all in the future, but not my, my personal number. It's a, enough damn people got that already. But um, email me or inbox me here on uh, Facebook. Either one is fine. Whatever's convenient for you. House of Israel NYC at gmail.com or... Right here on Facebook, Kanai Zabak. All right, y'all watching me on here, so y'all should know how to inbox on here. All right, now I want to read these last few precepts. Again, it says, um, 1 Maccabees 4 and 41. Then Judas appointed certain men to fight against those that went uh, in the fortress until he had cleansed the sanctuary. So they was cleansing the temple and still fighting off the enemy, still cleansing the enemies out of the land. 
That was a form of cleansing too, killing off the Greeks and the other nations and the sellout Israelites and getting them out of the land. That was a form of cleansing also. All right. It says, uh, Shalakia, who cleansed the sanctuary and bare out the defiled stones unto an unclean place. And when as they consulted what to do with the altar of burnt offerings, which was polluted, they thought it best to pull it down, lest it should be a reproach to them because the heathen had defiled it, wherefore they pulled it down and laid up the stones in the mountains of the temple in a convenient place until there should come a prophet to show what should be done with them. Then they took whole stones according to the law and built up a new altar according to the former and made up the sanctuary and the things that were within the temple and hollowed the courts and made also new holy vessels and into the temple they brought the candlestick and the altar of burnt offerings and the incense and the table all right so it said they bought the candlestick what is the candlestick? The menorah. All right. The menorah. This is the 18 inch I have. All right. And y'all can inbox me if y'all interested in getting those and getting these uh, purchasing. That's the 18 inch. I'm going to go down the line once again before I close out. The 18 inch. This is the 16.5 inch. Jerusalem and Shalom on it on both on either side. Um, the 15 inch. With the shield in the mid, the lily in the middle, or if you don't co-sign to the shield, this can be switched. There's another part. This can be switched and made regular. That's the 15 inch. All right. Here's the 10 inch with Jerusalem, Shalom, and Jerusalem on either side. And the different symbols of the different 12 tribes. Uh, this is the desktop 5 inch. Silver and brass with brass on the top with shalom on both sides. The desktop five inch. And these are the different menorah chains that I've got. All right. So inbox me if y'all interested. Um, and I hope y'all write up. All right. Um, don't get simple. This ain't making merchandise out of Israel. This is just getting y'all y'all menorahs for Hanukkah. All right. So, um. Also, for homework, y'all read Daniels chapter 8, verses 1 through 14. Now, Daniels chapter 8, verses 1 through 14. We're not going to go into it now. We'll break that down on the Hanukkah service. Or, or I might just treat y'all to another video um, before, before Hanukkah. And I'll go a little bit more deep. Uh, you know, give, give you a little bit more in depth. If not, everything will be broken down on Sunday at even when we do the live service and you'll get all the history of the Hanukkah. But for your homework, Daniel chapter eight, verses one through 14. Or you can read the whole chapter if you want. And first Maccabees chapters one through four. Those are the most important chapters for your homework. There will be other scriptures on the Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication, but we want y'all to concentrate on those. Why? Because Daniel's the eighth chapter is the prophecy. Shout out one, HOI 716 in the building. Call me a shout out. Daniel's eight verses one through 14 is the prophecy of on Hanukkah. That's going into how the Greeks would invade Jerusalem. We would fight them off. We would defeat them and we would take back the temple. First Maccabees one through four chapters one through four is the actual fulfillment of Daniel's 8, 1 through 14. So for all of y'all that say, you Hebrews that say, so all of you that, that got a problem because it's not in Leviticus 23, it was added in history by the Heavenly Father, and the Lord can do what the hell he want to do. So now read Daniel's 8, 1 through 14, and read 1 Maccabees chapters 1 through 4. Now, Whatever y'all don't understand, we will explain and break down on the Feast of Dedication, Sunday, November 28th at even. All praises to Yahweh Bashim and Mashiach Yahushah. All right, so that's a little brief understanding on how to celebrate Hanukkah. Very simple, very to the point. 
is an eight-day celebration. Let me reiterate. is an eight-day celebration starting at November 28th, Sunday at even. It ends on December 6th, Tuesday, December 6th at even. But the closing service, pay attention to the title and pay attention to what I'm saying. The closing service will take place on Sunday, November 5th. I mean, on December 5th at even. That's when the closing gathering will take place because the day starts at sundown. But when the sun goes down on December 6th, Tuesday, that's when it's over. But we gather for the closing on Sunday, December 5th at even because the closing of the seventh day brings in the eighth day. Now, once Tuesday... I mean, Salakia, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Salakia, once Monday, I'm going to change it in the title. Once Monday, December 6th at even, Monday, not Tuesday, Salakia, I'll change it in the title. Once Monday, December 6th at even comes in, Hanukkah is over. Now, me personally, damn it, I'm celebrating Hanukkah to January this year. I'm going against that Christmas, New Year's spirit. But officially, is an eight-day feast. So officially, technically, it's over Monday, December 6th at even. But you do the service, you gather on Sunday, December 5th at even. Everybody understand? I I'm, I'm, hope I didn't confuse y'all. If y'all understand what I'm saying, give me a con triple seven, and I'll change it in the title because I got Tuesday in the title. I don't know why I got Tuesday. I'll change it in the title. So everybody understand? Give me a con triple seven. So that's basically what your Hanukkah is about in a nutshell. All right. Open up, pray, say your prayers, um, read the story, meditate on it, get your Apocrypha. Well, you know, that's part of the story, so you need that. Get your Bible dictionaries, Bible commentaries, whatever. Have your laptop. Look up historical figures. Um, uh, you can have your Josephus. That goes into Hanukkah. You can have your historical books, like I said, your laptop or your phone, your tablet, whatever. Look up the history, Google and look up and research all the names you see in the scriptures. Um, if you can, you can get a book called Who's Who in the Bible and Apocrypha if you have time. If you get it, you make it order it on Amazon now and still get it in time. Um it's called Who's Who in the Bible and Apocrypha. And they got different ones. So you can order one of those. A good one is the one by Reader's Digest. Um, and it'll you can read about the historical figures you're reading about in the Maccabees. All right. It's, it's called Who's Who in the Bible and Apocrypha. And it's different authors, it's different version and authors. But I know one of the good ones is Reader's Digest. Reader's Digest. But they got other ones. And... Those are like Bible dictionaries for the Apocrypha. Because a lot of times when you go to the regular Bible dictionaries, it don't give you the, the names in the Apocrypha. So that's another study tool. All right. Also, I will be sharing some videos that I've done over the years concerning Hanukkah and Thanksgiving. And when Hanukkah and Thanksgiving fell around the same time in 2013, I'll share some of those on my Facebook and Instagram. Y'all can go back over those historical videos. A lot of good information on them. They were done years ago, but a lot of good information. And you'll get a whole gambit and be well-rounded with what all this, this Hanukkah season is about and staying the hell away from Thanksgiving. All right, 1 John um, 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Thanksgiving is of this world, is the slaughtering of the Native American Indians by Esau. The devil that the Bible speaks of and it commemorates our, our Gadite brothers being slaughtered. So don't celebrate it. All right. Come together and the Most High is beautiful. He gave us the Hanukkah season to offset this wicked Thanksgiving season. So all praises to the Most High and Yahweh Shah. So once again, Sunday sundown, November 28th. I got to repeat because Israel, you'll hear me say it and still acts. Sunday, November 28th at even is the first day of Hanukkah. If you cannot make it to one of the services with us in the different cities, um, in your home, say an opening prayer, um, Lord's Prayer, whatever general prayers you want to do. 
2 Maccabees chapter 1, verses 24 through 30, the prayer of the Maccabees. Anointing prayer, anoint yourself with olive oil, number 6, 22 to 27. Uh, hear, O Israel, Deuteronomy 6 and 10, whatever other prayers you want to say. Um, read the story of the Maccabees, 1 Maccabees chapters 1 through 4, but on that night you can just read chapter 4 to get an understanding. You can watch us live. The different cities of HOI will be going in depth into the story, breaking it down, giving you some historical facts. Um, go through the story. When you end it off, relight your menorah. Make sure you light your menorah. All right. Light your menorah. You put your seven candlesticks in and you light it. Or if the, the olive oil, if you know how to do it with the olive oil, a lot of Hebrews don't know about that yet. I've, I still got to do a tutorial on that, how to burn a menorah with the olive oil. But either way, the closing, you burn your menorah, burn your franken myrrh, say your closing prayer, you know, thank the Most High for the Hanukkah, thank whatever, between you and the Lord. Um, you can read like Psalms 121 or Psalms 23 as a closing prayer. And after you pray out, you eat, drink, and celebrate the Hanukkah. And for the, all the eight days is a celebration. All right, there's no Sabbath in there except for the regular Sabbath. The regular Shabbat, you abstain from work and everything else, but you can cook on that regular Shabbat because it's within the eight days of the feast. You might hear other different Israelite camps teach different, but that's what we teach at HOI. That's what we see and understand through the scriptures. You can cook on that Sabbath because you're celebrating the eight days of the feast. So come Sunday, no, Friday, sundown december 3rd at even will be the new moon 10th month so you can definitely cook on that day because it's the new is the regular sabbath and the new moon then on sunday december 3rd at even will be the closing of the hanukkah so on the third you you um get together and read the scriptures on the new moon in your house and pray and feast then and that's that also will be the sixth day of hanukkah so you're celebrating the new moon and the sixth day of Hanukkah in one. And then on Sunday, I know this is a lot, y'all. Y'all might be getting confused, but just pay attention to what I'm saying and rewatch the video. Sunday, December 5th at even, you celebrate the closing of Hanukkah. And you do the same thing. Open with prayer. Read the story of the Maccabees, the history. Close with prayer. Eat, drink, and be merry. And watch your eating and drinking, Israel. Make sure your eating and drinking is in moderation. But feast all throughout the eight days, man. Cook your nice meals. Cook your favorite desserts. Make your favorite mixed drinks. If you don't drink, make your favorite smoothies or green juice or veganism.com. All right? Knock yourself out. Make your favorite vegan plate if you don't eat meat. But I don't know about y'all. I'm, I'm going to Whole Foods and some of the higher end markets. I'm going to get me some, some flesh, goddammit. Cook it well done and feast. All right, make sure I cleanse it with the salads and the other things. But hey, I ain't on that vegan tip, Israel. Knock yourself out. All right, but that's about it, Israel. Hope y'all got edified by this video. Hope I got right to the point. Um, remember, if y'all need y'all menorahs, hit me up. I'll try to get them to y'all. Y'all may have to pay that extra fee for me to overnight it. I'll try to get it to y'all before Sunday. If not... You'll get it Monday, Tuesday. It'll still be within Hanukkah week. You can still burn your menorah throughout the uh, rest of the eight days and burn it on the other feast days that are, that are coming up. For the year, 2021 is only three days left. It's this Sunday. The opening of Hanukkah is next Friday, the new moon, the 10th month. And it's next Sunday, the closing of Hanukkah, the eighth day. That's the last three feast days left for 2021. The calendar will be... Um, the 2022 calendar will be ready, hopefully, Lord's will, before this month is out. It's technically ready already. I just got to fine-tune it, go back over the dates before I put it out. I don't want to make no mistakes. If you had the old calendar from last year, I believe we made an error and we put Saturday, November 28th for the open of Hanukkah, but it's actually Sunday. We do apologize about that. You know, I put that on myself. Me and a brother put the calendar together. He printed it out for me. So I don't want to blame it on him. I don't know if he made a mistake, but I'll put it on myself. I probably made a mistake and put Saturday instead of Sunday. 
But it's Sunday, November 28th for the opening of Hanukkah. If you got the OHOI calendar, we do apologize about that. And we'll be more thorough with this calendar. That's why it takes time because we got to make sure them dates is on point. All right. So that's about it, Israel. Uh, so read your scriptures and uh, everybody have a happy Hanukkah. Stay away from Thanksgiving. Um, if your family try to get you in that Thanksgiving spirit, just stay away from it. Especially if you live on your own, just don't go over there. All right, you tell your family, I love y'all. We give thanks every year, but, you know, 1 John 2, 15 and through 17, we don't, we don't love this world. We don't partake of the things of this world. We partake of Leviticus 23, Maccabees, and all the feast days the Most High gave us. And just stay away from that Thanksgiving, that's all. Eat some turkey on Sunday. Make you a nice turkey on Sunday for the Hanukkah. All right, so I'm going to start off with that. Peace, blessings, and the kingdom of heaven to the 12 tribes of Israel. Death and destruction to Esau and the other nations. Um, there's a lot going on in the news, Israel. We will be touching on some of that stuff too. The prophecies, uh, is just so much going on. But in the midst of all this that's going on in the world, we still got to serve the Most High. So in the midst of all this prophecy and destruction, I know we want to talk about it. We know our brother, our brother put in some work in Wisconsin and random five Edomites over and got justice for that Cal Rittenhouse verdict. But uh, we're going we gonna, to we gonna, we gonna deal with a lot of that. All right, Israel. But the feast days are important. So we got to stay focused on keeping the laws and the feast days, even though we're in the midst of major prophecy. All right. So with that, once again, peace, blessings in the kingdom of heaven to the 12 tribes of Israel, death and destruction to Esau and the nations, Power, peace, safety, and the kingdom of heaven to the 12 tribes for heaven of our man, Bashim and Mashiach Yahushai. Priest Sabak, HOI to the chariots fly, all the camps in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai throughout the four corners of the earth. Uh, Salakia, all the camps in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai throughout the four corners of the earth. Uh, my stand legs got weak at the last minute. Salakia, y'all. Uh, HOI to the chariots fly, HOI pull up boys, all the camps in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Throughout the four corners of the earth, call me Yashala. We still got next. Hallelujah. All praises to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai forever and ever. Amen. Don't forget, inbox me on here on Facebook if you need menorahs, menorah chains, anything you need, uh, or email me, houseofisraelnyc at gmail.com. Um, if you want to support, continue support at gofundme.com, House of Israel. If you want to support through Cash App, Cash App is dollar sign, should call 777, S as in Sam, H as in hat, A as in Apple, Q as in quiet, A as in Apple, L as in Larry, 777, dollar sign at the beginning if you want to support on Cash App for feast days, tithes, offerings, donations, arms, or just because you love HOI, god damn it, but it's like you or if you want to, uh, Send your tithes, orphans, donations, arms, um, support through PayPal. It's paypal.com at INAC. I as in Nancy, N as in Apple, A as in... Uh, I as in Instinct, Salakia. N as in Nancy, A as in Apple, K as in Karate. 747 like the plane at yahoo.com on PayPal. So send in your support, Israel. We need that. If you're attending a feast day, you can pay your fees. If you're coming out here to L.A. with us... Come on out if you're going to any of these cities, let us know. And uh, you can donate your fees and attend the feast, all right? And as always, give whatever you can, and the Most High will take care of the rest, all right? So, Kwame Ashala, we still got next. Hallelujah. Happy Hanukkah early. Ashar Kanaka and an ancient paleo to all the brothers and sisters. Kwame Ashala, signing off. Priest Sabak from HOI to the chariots fly. Hallelujah. Happy Hanukkah 2021. Shalom.